in that as though you're a person who understands how I'm really feeling. Still, this diary is the only thing that feels even remotely similar to my old life. Maybe it's just natural that I'm going a bit crazy. I'm stuck with strangers after all. They're pretty nice, although I don't know much about them. They're a young couple called Mr. and Mrs. Lenning, and they have a son around my age called Isaac. I don't, I don't really know what to make of him. Sometimes I just catch him looking at me as though he's shocked that someone in this situation can be so <laughs> chatty and inquisitive. I suppose it is a bit overwhelming. I mean, being separated from my family wasn't easy, but what other choice do I have? I mean, I can't. I, I'll have to find a way to cope. I have to. I mean, what other choice do I have? I, I dream about them sometimes. The other night, it happened, I'll think of mum and dad and Elizabeth and Ashman and then I'll reach out to them and they'll vanish into thin air and I'll realise that it was a cruel, cruel dream. Mum and dad are part of the rebellion and they thought of us first though, I mean, they put us here to protect us. I'm okay, I can cope, but I'm just so scared and worried for my parents. They know what they're doing, but I'm just so scared that they'll get hurt or something will happen to them. I just have to keep my head up and keep being strong. Sometimes on days when I'm feeling really low, I'll think of what I want to do when I grow up, which is a writer, and I'll be writing stories and kids will cluster around me asking about the characters in the stories. That is a future that I will probably have, thanks to the bravery of the rebels. Anyway, bye, XO, Nat. I know I've come across as this unbreakable shell of a person, a fortress with its walls up and gate locked, but I'm just protecting myself, most importantly, her. She was young. She doesn't remember what it's like to be betrayed. To her, anyone who even acknowledges her existence is a friend and someone to be trusted. Someone has to set the boundaries and keep the secrets or we will end up dead. She doesn't remember. It doesn't matter how I describe it to her. It doesn't matter if I let my walls down and let out the flood of emotions. She doesn't remember. So she will never know what it's like to have to run from your own parents. She will never know what it's like to have to smell the cries of a screaming child with one bloody hand while covering your own with the other. Just to avoid capture from the very people who promised to protect you. Because it doesn't matter 
if the pointers overthrow every wolf like they say they will, it doesn't matter if they kill the mother. We will still be alone in this world. We will still sleep with one eye open and a gun under our pillow. We will still run and hide and lie and be lied to. It will just be a different pack of dogs after our necks. So many thoughts going through my head Wondering when it will end Hey, 3am It's me again I ain't getting no sleep So many promises I hope I can keep From my sister Who's wondering when it will end No more staring out my window I must keep my head held high Sometimes I wish life could be easy For my family I have to try To tell them things will soon get better That frustration turns to hope Find new ways to stop anxiety And find new ways to go Day 3 a.m. It's me again Day 3 a.m. Dear Diary Today I've oh had God, enough. These people are so annoying. That brainless waste of space over there is crying at every single noise. And that ninny head won't stop whining. And that puny oxygen thief right there won't stop singing. I literally hate all of them. I can't wait to get out of this hideous attic. Right. What did I just say to you, you stupid little clown? Ugh. Well, I've had it again. My parents had it, arguing. This time, because Dad bought too much loo roll just in case it didn't get enough tin food to last. I don't see what all the fuss is about tin food anyway. It just sits around all day, doing nothing and collecting dust. Speaking of which, Grandpa's still with us, because Mum says it's not safe to leave. Not after what happened to his sister. God bless her. Secretly, I'm kind of glad it's still not safe, so I get to spend more time by myself. But I wouldn't dare tell my parents that. In fact, I don't really tell my parents anything anymore. Instead, I tell my conker collection. Yep, yeah, you heard me correct. Conkers. I tell them all my deepest secrets, all my triumphs and tragedies, because they're the best audience. They never comment or judge me on what I tell them. They're just... Listen, it's stupid, I know, they're inanimate, but at least they understand better than them lot arguing over some loo rolling tinned food. I was thinking about my friend Ellen the other day. I hope they're all right. Never even got to say goodbye. 
Dear Diary, So is this it then? We put our lives on the line to get out of that hell and now we're just stuck here like this. I remember it was just a Monday morning. School, class, but then suddenly noise, panic, people everywhere, complete and utter chaos. And I'll never see any of them ever again. And now we're hold up here, trapped like rats, cold, no, <laughs> freezing actually. My mum's not here. She died. It must have been a year ago now. They tell you that it gets better. They tell you that the pain will go away, but it doesn't. You just get better at dealing with it. I know she want me to keep going, so I will. The government is our problem. They don't care about us, about my mum, about anyone. Our lives don't matter to them, and you're kidding yourself if you think they do. Now this is what the rebellion is really about. Making our lives mean something, and not just a unit on the government's data. And if I have to spend ten years trapped inside this tiny little room to get what we deserve, so be it. This is for you, Mum. Dear Diary, this is day... I don't even know. I've been here so long it's become my home away from home in some way. I've been sitting in this room for days now, waiting. Waiting until somebody tells me I can leave. And I can see them again. My family. My friends. They're still stuck in that lovely life, they called it. I remember it clearly when I first left. I haven't heard from them since. On the bright side, I've been writing more. More than I ever have before, really. I've written everything that's happened since I came here. Everything changed so quickly. I wish I could go back. Go back and try to have seen the red flags that were so obvious. I must have been blinded by stupidity for not seeing them sooner. Not doing something sooner. But I'm trying my best here to try and figure out a way to fix this and to help other people see everything isn't quite as crystal clear as we thought.
I can paint and escape into bluebells and daisies, with clouds above dancing and sun-blistered wood of the cabins and huts housing sweet sounds of families, enjoying a meal around a table as they should. I can paint up a sky of oranges and blues and make my brush turn a canvas from night into day, short-lived control as I paint an excuse so I can ignore the destruction and deathly decay. See, paint cannot steady a journey of grief, the loss of who you were, a game of hide and seek, an everlasting running from the place you once called home, an ever-present knowing that your life is just a show to the people who have power to make a change in this world, but instead exploit minds and steal innocence to give birth to a fortress of control who expects to be called mother. That's the kind of evil no amount of paint could ever cover. Your name isn't yours, your identity is forced, abiding broken laws just to reinforce that there is no escape. Lots of bluebells and daisies. Not even tonight with the possibility of safety. But people are dying. They're dying, I'm dying, and I can't do a thing to make sense of their crying, of tears falling heavy, burning cheeks sweet and rosy, turned pale and tinged green, grief-stricken, they plead. And become gross reflections of society's acceptance of nothing but perfection. And if not, you'll get sectioned. I paint to feel like more like my worth has a weight. I paint so I know what it's like in a world I don't hate. If I close my eyes, I'm there in a place I once knew. The mountains I would I can hear Grandma crying again. That's why I'm in here. I always seem to make emotional people more emotional. It's probably because I say things as they are. If Grandma said she couldn't believe someone had told on us, I'd probably say something insensitive, and then she'd cry more, and my parents would get worried someone would find us. I'd just make everything worse. She'd carp trail the worst, Grandma. No one suspected us of anything. That was until the man next door. I think his name was Robert, told someone about what we were doing. It wasn't even that bad, but then we had to rush away. I think that made us look more suspicious, but no one wanted my opinion. Mum had a friend who said we could stay with them. 
It's never quiet now. I miss my old life. I miss school. I miss everything. But that's all gone now. So now I stay here and do my best not to go completely crazy. I think I have a book somewhere here. I'll read that to take my mind off Grandma. Dad will be with her in a minute. I wish I could help, but I think we all care more that we're together. That's the most important thing. I can't imagine what it would be like if they weren't here. I'd be so worried. They're all that keeps me going, really. And this won't be forever. It'll end soon. moment that it all went wrong? When lies became truth, drilled in heads like a song, when did you realise that it's plain to see that the system's corrupted like you and me? How did we go so long and so far, cementing our smiles to form a constant scar? But then again, who cares if it's all a fabrication? Ignorance is easier for the hearts of our nation. We cheat, we lie, turn a blind eye, and we know that if we dare climb out of the system designed to dictate our destiny, the one so cold and narrow trapping us in a maze, that we might just get a glimpse of reality. But it's ugly. So let now be the moment that you face it. Be brave. Stand with us. Yeah! <laughs> Join us in.